Alright, so we're going to do some problems for today. And uh, these are some additional problems. You'll find them in the usual page. You go to my page. I don't know the exact full uh, address, but you have to click on courses. This will be a tab on the left. And then you click on ED512. Okay, if you go on the line, it will take you to a page which has the things, and this is uh, these are additional questions. Okay, additional questions. Okay, so that's the that's the information on how to get them. So I'm going to start with the first one. Okay, so so here's the uh, first question. So so almost all these quizzes questions showed up in some quiz or finals or something like that. Okay, so it will indicate it there. Okay, so you have a variable x which belongs to g of 32. Okay, so 2 power 5 characteristic 2 p. And then you have something, some function or an operator that's defined on this. Okay, so it's, it's called uh, within the str. It's you can expand it as trace if you like. It's called trace. It's a standard operator in uh, this area. So plus t x plus x bar plus x bar four plus x bar eight plus x bar sixteen. Okay, is it okay? So that's the formula. So give me any x in G of thirty two. I'll apply this and give you trace of x. Okay. So the first chart. Asks you to compute, basically asks you to show the following. Trace of x squared, what will it be? Okay, so if I square it, what's going to happen? I have to take this whole thing and square it, it will be x bar plus x bar 4 plus x bar 8 plus x bar 16 plus x bar 32, and that's x itself. So we see immediately what it is equal to trace of x. Okay, so trace of x is something which when squared gives trace of x again. Okay. So, so you can pull this to the side. When you see trace of x times trace of x plus one equals zero, which means trace of x is equal zero or one. Okay, minus one, which is the same as one, because we know we are in a characteristic two field. Okay, so the range of trace of x is only zero or one. Okay, so trace of x is a special operator that way. It takes any element of GS32 and sends it to binary 0 or 1 okay and the part b asks you to show the next interesting property okay trace of x plus y will be what okay so it's not very hard instead of x you put x plus y x will be x plus y and everything is just a power of 2 so we'll eventually get x power 2 plus x y power 2 then x power 4 plus y power 4 etc etc so it's very easy to show that this will be the same as trace of x plus plus y okay so we've seen a very interesting property for trace. It's also uh, uh, an operator which preserves summation. As in it's, it's, uh, it behaves well with summation. If you take trace of x plus y, you will get trace of x plus trace of y. It's not quite, uh, I mean, you can say it's linear and uh, roughly, but it's, so if you take, for instance, if you, if you multiply x with some alpha, trace of alpha x will not be the same as alpha times trace of x. So it's not, it doesn't work out that way. So it's not linear with respect to multiplicative constants. Okay, but that's too much to expect. I mean, you can think of it. But, but as far as summation is concerned, it is uh, linear. Okay, so linearity is usually with respect to this guy. Okay, so if you take zero or one, then it is linear. Okay, so that's okay. And then the next question asks you to find find all x such that. Trace of x equals zero. How do you do that? Sorry? Yeah, I mean, so one way of doing it is to just say take all the 32 elements and then, of course, zero is a quick answer. Take all the 32 elements and then do what? We just compute one after the other and we will get the answer. Okay. So there are some shortcuts you can take. So for instance, if you if you take an element which is uh, square, so for instance, if I evaluate trace of x squared, what will I get? Same as trace of x, right? So you can use such tricks. Okay, so this is also true. Is that correct? Am I right or am I wrong? What is trace of x squared? Is the same as trace of x? 
right? So you will get uh, so, so x squared plus x power 4 plus x power 8 plus x power 16 plus x again, okay? So you get the same as trace of x. Okay, so that gives you a clue as to how to shorten your computation. What is this clue? How does this help you? For each six atomic percent, you just enough, it's enough if you compute for one. Okay, so then you can quickly sit there and see and do that. Okay? So you will see that 16 of the elements of GF32 will have trace 0. The remaining 16 will have trace 1. Okay, so that is another property which you can show for the trace function in general also. Okay, so trace is a special linear operator from GF32 to GF2. Okay, so Okay, so part 2 basically expands on it, it asks you to show the second question is similar to the first question, okay, similar to one, I am going to skip it, you try it on your own, it's very similar except that you do something slightly more general than going to binary, okay, so you can take a look at it, so it's a bit interesting. Okay, so let's go to the third question, so the third question is about solving quadratic equations over finite fields. Okay. So, you have a quadratic set equation which is basically f of x equals x square plus x plus k equals 0 okay. and k belongs to g of 32, okay. some constant which is in g of 32. Okay. x is your variable okay. and x also belongs to g of 32. We'll try to get to a formula for solving for x. Okay, so so if you have this 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 for a, a real equation with real coefficients, you know the formula already, right? So it's going to be minus two plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac by two a. It, there's nothing wrong with the formula as such, except that you're dividing by two. Okay, so, so in finite fields of characteristic two, it's not going to work. Okay, otherwise the formula will work. If you do not have characteristic two, the formula will very happily work. Okay, so you can happily use it. There's no problem. Okay, so that's a very uh, that is a very uh, just based on the form. If you go back and look at how to derive it, only if you know how to derive it, what do you do to derive it? You have to complete the squares. Okay, so here you cannot complete the squares because there is no 2. No, I mean, so you will get into trouble. So, so, so that will work in any field except for characteristic 2. Okay, so in characteristic 2, in some cases you can use this trick. Okay, so this is the trick uh, that you use. Okay, so part A shows you, shows you how it works. Okay, part A says, suppose you have a solution. Suppose that there is an x in GF32 which will solve this. Okay, so let's let's look at it. Okay, so so what are the various possibilities? X square plus x plus k could be irreducible over GF32. In which case there will be no solution. Okay, or there should be two solutions. Right, there cannot be just one solution over any field. Why is that? Yeah. So if you have one solution, you know it will factor. The other thing is linear, and that will definitely have a solution over any field. Okay, so. Right? Because it is a quadratic, you can say quickly that it has to either have two roots in GF32 or no roots at all. Okay? So let us say first of all that there is a root. Okay? So there is a root, okay? which means there exists x such that x square plus x plus k equals 0. So now what you can do is, so what the question asks you to do is to show a certain property for k. For k okay? So it shows, so you can show, you can show the following. Okay, the question asks you to show it. I'm just saying you can show. So like k plus k square plus k power four plus k power eight plus k power sixteen. What what is this? We know this as a function, right? What is this? Trace of k. In fact, trace of k has to be equal to three. Okay, you can show this. How do you do that? Yeah, so k is equal to x plus x squared, and then you do a trace. That is the same as trace of x plus trace of x squared, but you know trace of x squared is the same as trace of x and it has to go to 0. Okay, so you can do the manipulation if you like, you will get 0. Okay. So what does this immediately mean? In the previous question, you listed all the elements of gf 2 which had trace 0. So there are 16 such elements. Okay. So whenever k takes one of those 16 values, you can possibly have a root. Okay. If it takes something else, then the trace is 1 and that violates the requirement that you have. So there cannot be a solution in gf so that is the first uh, nice application of the trace. Okay? So if you thought trace is a kind of a trivial result, it is a nice application to show that only if the trace is 0 for k, you will have roots in GF32. Yes. I am sorry? The trace of x can be 
Yeah, yeah, trace of k should be 0. Yeah, x is not relevant to this. So, x squared plus x plus k, the question that I am asking is, for what k do you have a solution? And there is also a reason why you do not have to look at ax squared plus bx plus k. You, know, I mean, you can manipulate, you do, do a very simple substitution to get it to x squared plus x plus constant. Okay, so, it is not very hard. You just put one x equals suitable substitution, you will get to this. Okay, so, this is a very general form of a quadratic equation. Okay, yes. No, 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 no. K is not the variable. K is some constant that I am picking ahead of time. K is not satisfying. K is a constant that is chosen ahead of time. Right? K is a constant that has been chosen. Suppose x squared plus x plus k has a solution. As in there is some x which solves that equation. Then you can show trace of k has to be 0. Which means what? You use the what is called the contra positive or whatever of the statement. So, trace of k is 1 then there cannot be any x for which that is true. Okay, so, so A implies B means what? Yeah, not B implies not A, right? But not A does not imply not B, okay? So, that is that's the converse of this statement. Okay, so hopefully you have read these logics before, but remember that in mind. A implies B does not mean that not A implies not B. Only not B implies not A, that is called the contra possible. Okay, so x has a what do you mean by x having a coefficient? Alpha x plus k. Yeah? See, then what you should do is, uh, you should do the substitution y equals alpha x or x by alpha, one of those things. Okay. So, if you do the substitution, you will see, uh, I think it is, uh, you, you can go back to a y squared plus y plus some other constant equal to 0. So, it is not a very hard thing to do. I mean, it is something very simple, but think about it. Given an alpha in GF32, can I always find uh, other alpha. element in GF32 whose square gives me alpha? Haha, <laughs> wait, <laughs> you are asking, does every element in GF32 have a square root? What do you think? Yes. Why? Yeah, so yeah. exactly. So there will be always a square root in GF32. The reason is, if alpha power i, if i is even, then clearly there is a square root. You simply take i by 2. If i is odd, what will you do? You add 31 to i. Oh, you know, alpha power 31 is 1, right? So you add 31 to i. So 31 plus i will be even now. So you take that by 2, you will get a square root. So every element has a square root. So what is your connection in asking me that question? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so there is ways of, so, so a x square plus b x plus c is not necessarily the most general form of the quadratic equation. You can go from there to x square plus x, x plus something. Or maybe y square plus y plus something. I think it is b c by a in general. I mean I forget this. It is a very standard substitution. These are tricks you can do. Even for cubic equations, you do not have to necessarily look at a x power 3 plus b x square plus. There are ways to move it around so that you get only set x cube plus a x plus c. These are standard things that you do. Yes. It is a bit non trivial. <laughs> so, the question was how do you get to this if you did not know anything else? So it's, it's, it takes some clever tricks. I mean, it is not a very obvious answer. I know the answers I am doing it, but otherwise, it is not very obvious. Yeah, in every field you can do it. So, so here you can see what I have done, right? I have gone up to 16 and stopped. Okay, so, you can start with x and keep on squaring it till you go to a non-trivial square. So, when you come back, you just stop it. That is the trace and that will satisfy all these conditions. All these nice properties will satisfy. Okay, it has some very powerful results. Okay, so I will just take it for two days. Any linear functional from this Galois field to the lower field is, is in general trace of some constant time size. There is nothing else that is linear. Okay, so you can, it has a very generic property like that. Okay, so anyway, it is not very relevant right now, but it has very strong properties. All right, so part B asks you to do the following. Find i and j such that f of k power i plus k power j equals 0. Okay. Right. So basically, you know, this is 0, right? See, so you know, k plus k square plus k power 4 plus k power 8 plus k power 16 is 0. So you just look at this equation. You can identify an x and an x square. Okay, so from here, okay, 
So you can write it as k plus uh, k plus k square plus uh, k power 8 plus k square plus k power 8 whole square is 0. Okay, so the space of k equal to 0 already gives you a solution for x. Right? So now what do you do? You simply set one of the roots to be this. Okay, so k square plus 8, k power 8 is one root. Is it okay? Alright, so you can identify that. Okay, so what is the other root? Square of this. Mm -hmm. Square of this will not be the answer. What is the other root? 1 plus this. Okay, so 1 plus this will be the other root. Think about it. See, any quadratic equation, the middle term has to be equal to the sum of the two roots. Right? So, the middle sum is 1 already. 1 by okay, b minus b by a if you like. And b and a are uh, 1 here and minus is the same. So, the sum has to be 1. So, 1 root is given, the other root is obvious. 1 plus k square plus k power. You can also do with the product, you will get the same answer. Yes. Okay. So, these are tricks you can use to solve quadratic equations in a finite field. Okay. So, I did it in GF32. If you try the same trick in GF16, it will not work. Okay. The reason is, if you notice here, there will be only 4 terms here. Okay. K plus K square plus K plus 4 plus K plus 8 equal to 0. You won't have this uh, split nicely. So, but in any odd m, GF2 par m, you can use the same trick. Okay. You have to have trace of K equal to 0. And then you split it, group it, you'll get the answer. It's very easy to solve quadratic equations in 2 power m. Okay, for m even, I will let you look up. I mean, there's a standard method. It's not that it's very hard. It can be done, but it's some other modification. It's not a very simple method like this. Is that okay? Okay, so that's the third question. And then the, I'm going to go to the fourth question. Okay, so even though I've written it, I'll urge you to once again go back and work out all these questions one after the other, like you didn't uh, know the answer, but it's very important. Like I said, I mean, if this is, there are a million things like this in finite shapes, right? So, I mean, every equation will have a method like this. So, you have to be comfortable enough with these kind of manipulations. Okay. All right. Okay. So, the fourth question is also a bit of a devious question. Okay. So, let me try and go through that. You have alpha belonging to G of 2 para, which is primitive. I think it's partly printed in your, uh, in the sheets I gave you because I didn't print both sides. I'm sorry about that. But I have the whole question. Okay. okay. So, this is primitive. And then, primitive nth root of unity. Okay. So, this is a primitive nth root of unity. Okay. So, this is the first information that's given to you. The next information given to you is, n is such that, 1 plus x plus x squared plus 1 till x power n minus 2 plus x power n minus 1, which you can write in short as i equals 0 to n minus 1 x power i, is irreducible. Of course, I have to say which field it is. It is irreducible over this ring. Okay, so g of 2x. In polynomials with coefficients, with binary coefficients, you can't factor this into a product of Okay, so, if you have non binary, of course you can factor, you know you can factor, right? So, I'll also give you the factors. So, but for but for binary, it's known that it's irreducible. So, this is what's given to you, and you have to find the following. Okay, the first thing you have to find is the minimal polynomial of alpha over GF2. Okay, it's not mentioned. You have to find m alpha of x over GF2. So, what's the binary polynomial? That is the first thing you have to find. I'm sorry? Yeah, I mean, it is usually over the binary field. It is okay. I mean, if you like, I can say it. So, which is a polynomial with binary coefficients which will have alpha as a root. And among those, pick the smallest one. Which one? Will it be this? How do you know alpha as a root of this? Ah, so, that is the first part in proving the. So, it is the only non trivial thing in proving that. Okay? So, you know that x power n plus 1 equals, so x power n plus 1 has alpha as a root, okay, right. So, if you take some polynomial f of x, 
which is f of uh, plus 1, then you know f of alpha equals 0. Okay. So now how can you factor x bar n plus 1? It's x plus 1 times whatever I wrote there. Okay. This has alpha as a root. Okay. Right. So now x plus 1 clearly does not have alpha as a root. So alpha has to be a root of this other thing. Okay, so alpha is the root of this guy and then I also know that is irreducible. Okay, so clearly that has to be the minimal polynomial of alpha over here. Okay, it has binary coefficients, right? That's also true. Part B is a little bit more devious. I'm going to leave you to it. If you really get stuck, ask me again on Thursday. We'll go through this. Okay, find the smallest positive integer. A such that 2 power j equals 1 model. Is it okay? Okay. So to find the smallest positive integer j such that 2 power j equal to 1 model. It's not very hard, it's very simple, but you may not so question sounds like it's totally different from the first part, right? So of course we will use the first part. Okay. So how do you use the first part? What do you think about the second atomic process? Because 2 power j equal to 1 affects the length of the second atomic process. And the fact that the minimal polynomial of alpha is, has degree n minus 1 says a lot about this atomic question. So you have to use that idea and then come to the answer. Okay? I'm sorry? Yeah, think about it. It will be something very simple. Like that. Okay? So, so it has to be, so you have to use that idea and get to the answer. Okay? So otherwise it just sounds like, man, how do you find the answer? It doesn't seem to be unrelated. But the relation is just a atomic question. Okay? So you know, how do you find the minimal polynomial of alpha mod, my, over GF2? You take all its cyclic atomic members, alpha, alpha square, so on, right? What should be the size of the cyclic atomic process? It has to be equal to n minus 1. Only then the reducible polynomial will have n minus 1. Okay? So, what controls the size of the cyclic atomic process is the smallest j such that 2 parts j becomes equal to 1. Okay? And that has to happen only if at n or n minus 1. n, right? So, that's the idea. Okay? Okay, so think about it. So, if you are really stuck, come back and talk to me, I will describe this in more detail, but that is the idea. Okay, so, you have to connect the size of the cyclotomic process to the degree of the irreducible polynomial. And size of the cyclotomic process is controlled by this case. Smallest j such that 2 power j equal to 1 model, right? Because you are doing multiplication by 2 modulo n. Okay, so, you start with 1. Okay, so, what is how do you do cyclotomic process for alpha? Okay, you start with 1 and then you do 2, 2 squared. 2 power 3, so on you keep doing, everything is modulo n till you get a repetition. I know that up to 2 power n minus 2, there is no repetition. Maybe it is n minus 1, okay, so think about it. So 2 power n minus 2, there is no repetition. How do I know that there is no repetition? And otherwise, the degree of the minimal polynomial will not be n minus 1, okay. So of course, in 2 power n minus 1, it has to be equal to 1 model, okay. So that is how it will work out, okay. So that is the idea behind this. Uh, relationship. So, as you can imagine, there are many more complicated relations between polynomials, irreducibility, and how the number 2 behaves when successive powers are raised. Okay? So, so, this is this quite important. This is k, right? Okay, this j, smallest j such that 2 power j equal to 1 mod n will be the size of the cyclotomic coset for alpha. Okay? And that will be the degree of the minimal polynomial of alpha. Both of these will be modulo n, of course. Okay? Now, if I want the, so, so here it is very easy, but so suppose in, in general, I want the minimal polynomial of alpha part 3, okay, so I have to do 3, 3 times 2, 3 times 2 squared, so on. So, the smallest j for which 3 times 2 power j equals 1 mod n will give me the degree of that. Then we under the conception that you can throw 3 away, okay, you should keep 3 there, okay, there is no reason why 3 will go away, okay, 3 times 2 power j equal to 1, smallest j like that. Okay, so the same result is true everywhere. We have just used it in a special case here and we know the answer. Okay, so I am going to move on to the fifth question. So, if you try it again on your own. Okay, so the reason why I am not writing it down, when I write it down, it will be probably clear to you, but think about it and try it on your own. If you get stuck, come back and talk to me, I will I'll, I'll explain it more. Okay. Alright, so the fifth question is again interesting. It plays with the multiple constructions of uh, of uh, Okay, so I am going to define g of 16 in the following way. f of alpha 
polynomials with primary coefficients in the variable alpha okay such that degree of f of alpha is less than or equal to 3 okay so this is this can be gf16 if i do addition and multiplication modulo tau of alpha equal to some irreducible polynomial i'll pick up to be alpha power 4 plus alpha power 3 plus alpha square plus alpha plus 1 okay so i've chosen a deviation with the polynomial so if i do this what happens so, so this polynomial is irreducible, but it is not a primitive polynomial, right? So alpha will not be a primitive element of this field in this construction. Okay, something else will be the primitive element. Okay, so that's the twist here. You have to pay attention to that fact. Okay, if you don't do that, the answers will go wrong. Okay, and part A, I have asked to find the value of alpha in this GF system. Okay, in the before constructed GF system with minimal polynomial x power 4 plus x power 3 plus 1. Okay. Seems to make sense or no, think about it. So, how would you go about doing this? Sorry? Okay. Okay, so how would you, I mean, is there a more systematic way of doing it? That's my question. Hmm. Yeah, so I have to find a solution to this. Okay, that's a bit painful, right? I have to try each and every possibility. Is there a way to simplify that work? You know, you know something about isomorphism. Maybe you can use that. Using this as a polynomial, and then, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the idea. That will simplify your work considerably. Okay. So what should you do? You construct the GF16 with x power 4 plus x power 3 plus 1 as your pi of beta, so to speak. Okay. And then find the element in that whose minimal polynomial is x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x power plus x power 1. There you can use some standard constructions. Right, you know, you know what it is, right? So you, you based on your experience, you can quickly find that. Okay, so you know, like for instance, alpha part three, so beta part three would form that. So beta part three is not a good thing to use. You have to use its vector notation. Okay, and then you map when you map beta to alpha, that element will go to the element corresponding to this. Okay, is that okay? So it will be careful there. So you use that mapping, and then invert that mapping, you will get to get to this, and then you can quickly check that that also is the root of this. Once you find one root, other roots are easy. You just repeatedly square it, you will get it. Is that okay? Is that clear? Okay, so maybe we should try this. Then you know, people are a little bit confused. Okay, so let's say I construct a copy of an isomorphic copy of GF16. So maybe I'll call it GF16 bar. I know it's the same thing, but it's a little bit different. So I'll say it is of the form A0 plus A1 beta plus A2 beta square plus A3 beta plus 4. I know the AI is a binary and then what will I do? I will enforce that beta power 4 plus beta power 3 plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so addition and multiplication will be modular this. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I will do that. Okay. So here it's a little bit easier because I know beta is a primitive element okay so because this is a primitive polynomial okay so i know beta is a the primitive element of gf16 okay i'm sorry gf16 dot primitive <coughs> so x power 4 plus x power 3 plus 1 is a little bit different from what we are used to in standard but it, it only does see it only does a uh, uh, flipping right so so it's not too bad to deal with okay so we know that beta power 3 will have minimal polynomial this way. Okay. We are all right. So now, what will happen when I map? Uh, so, what should I do next? This part is a bit confusing to me. So, so this is that. 
So now I'm going to map. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the isomorphism, right? So I'm going to take uh, one to itself, and then I'm going to map beta to alpha, beta square to alpha square, beta to three to alpha to three, right? So what should happen if I do that? Can I do that? Is that is map to alpha. Okay, so that's what I should do, right? Is that clear? So, so I have to map beta to three to alpha. Is that correct? Yeah. So I should do that. So I have to map beta to three to alpha, and that should hopefully give me the the right thing. Okay. So how will I go from? How will I find this beta there in that other field? There? Okay. So that's what's uh, confusing me. So yeah, I can do that, right? So because beta to four. Will also have the same minimal polynomial as beta. So beta by four, I know, is one plus beta by three. So once I find any one element, I'm good enough. Okay. So it looks like the answer suggests that one plus alpha should be a root of x bar four plus x plus three. Okay. So so let's do that. So the isomorphism appears to be beta by three mapping to alpha. Okay. And then one plus beta by three equals beta by four here. Okay, so that that means one plus alpha should give you an element should have okay, and then n beta plus four is what x bar four plus x bar three plus one. So one plus alpha should have one plus x bar three plus x bar four as minimal polynomial. Seems to be okay, but let's check that. Okay, so I could go wrong. Would be wrong here. Okay, so let's check that. So let's check this. One plus one plus alpha plus three plus one plus alpha plus four. That becomes what? One plus one plus three is the same as one in this field. So it's alpha plus plus alpha plus three. Is that correct? Okay, and then you have one plus alpha plus four. Is it okay? So I get that. Okay, so it becomes one plus. Alpha plus alpha square plus alpha plus three plus alpha plus four, and that goes to zero. Okay, so one plus alpha is an element which has one plus x bar three plus x bar four as the minimal polynomial. Okay, so what are the other elements? One plus alpha square, one plus alpha plus four, which will become one plus. So you have to you have to keep doing the modulo pi of alpha. You can get all those. Okay, now we repeat the same thing with x bar four plus x plus one. Okay, so there you have to be a little bit more careful to go to this element. So here we were a little bit lucky; we got this very quickly. There you may not get it very quickly, but you have to work on it and then get to the suitable polynomial. I think it will be uh, something else. But anyway, so so you should be able to get there. Okay, so you can try and repeat the same thing for for the, this. Is that okay? Okay, so those are a little bit twisted. They have to use the isomorphism, or you can always use the tried and tested method. Okay. Just try a few cases. It's enough if you find one root. Okay, then the other roots can be quickly found. In fact, I think in the exam, if I remember correctly, most people took that route. Okay, so you just try a few cases. One plus alpha, now it's a prime candidate, right? If I one plus alpha, you know, it has to be of that form. Okay, so you try that. Try a few cases, and you'll succeed. Okay, so let's try the trial and error method for x plus four plus x plus one. So what can we try? So if I want a root of x plus four plus x plus one. Okay, so that's part B. Maybe I didn't tell you what part B is. Okay, so part B is repeating the same thing for x bar four plus x plus one. Okay, find all solutions for x bar four plus x plus one. So we know the roots of x bar four plus x two plus one. We know the roots of x bar four plus x two plus x bar plus one. Yeah, so you can also use. Yeah, so you can do various things, but for instance, x bar four plus x plus one will have one by the other thing as the root. But then when you have to do that, one by one plus alpha. If you're comfortable doing that modulo alpha plus four, then it's okay. It's not very hard. Something like alpha plus alpha squared does not divide anything else. <laughs> I don't know. So he's suggesting let's try alpha plus alpha squared. Is that what you're trying? He's really suggesting let's try it. Okay, so let's try alpha plus alpha squared. Okay, so what will you do for that? Alpha squared plus alpha bar eight plus alpha plus alpha squared plus one. Okay. So this is what you get. I'm sorry. Oh, alpha plus four. I'm sorry. Okay. 
raise the zero. Okay. Okay. So that seems fine. So I see alpha power five will be one, right? Is that okay? Okay. So you use the fact that this is equal to alpha power three. Okay. So because you use alpha power five equals one. Okay. So then you can quickly see that this also goes to zero. So alpha plus alpha square is the root of x plus four plus x plus one, and then you keep repeatedly squaring it till you exhaust all roots. Okay. So this is also usually equally nice method, but if you want to sound like you're being very smart and using isomorphisms and all, we can use the isomorphism and get to the answer also. Okay. But in general, trying out one after the other may be very inefficient. Okay. So because the number of roots are quite small, so using the isomorphism is a clean answer in general for bigger fields. It will work very nicely. For small fields like this, you can simply try some random things, and then you get it. So you have to use the arithmetic carefully. Notice that in this construction, alpha to alpha has order five. It's not an order fifteen element. Okay, so it's a different uh, different setup. Here. Okay, so I think we'll stop with this. We've done five questions. Uh, the sixth one is not too bad. You can try it. Okay. So I'll, I'll urge you to go and try these questions and the other questions in the in the website. Once again, the website is here. Okay, go to my page, click on courses 512. I've added a new assignment, additional questions. Okay, so there are as usual the additional questions are quite long. It's 21 questions left. Okay, so we'll try and go through all of them by this week. Hopefully, we'll see that. But tomorrow is going to be a presentation class. Uh, So Joshi and Swarna and uh, who else and Shailesh are present. Is it okay? All right.